Welcome back to the channel. Today we are in the town Sentinel de las Bodegas and it's got a nice little feature here. Firstly, it's a white town. It's got a population of 3,000, but it's got a very unique twist to the town. Let's go have a look. It's been here for about 20,000 years. No, that's wrong. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say again. Turn it off. <laughs> so this town has the oldest housing in the world. This was built about 20,000 years ago and they're built inside actual caves. So it's affectionately known as the Flintstone Village and you can see why. So we're going to go on a little hunt for Fred and Wilma. Oh, we've got our own pebbles in the van. How cool is that? That is nah. That would make me really nervous. Can you imagine <laughs> living in those underneath that massive rock? Yeah. So the cave or the rock is actually what's created the roof. That's insane, but brilliant. Wow. They've got all the little shops and restaurants in there as well. Look at that. I think we need to stop and get something to eat just so we can say we've had food out of a cave. And the roads, look how tiny they are, but they've still got cars coming down here. Yeah, but look at, we're walking underneath yeah. that. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Does that make you feel a bit nervous? So these are the two of the most typical streets in Sentinel. Their names are due to the amount of sun that they receive. The caves of the sun where we are face the south and are warmer than those in the shade. However, the interior of the houses in both streets conserves a very special microclimate, which keeps cool temperatures in the summer season and a little warmer in the winter. So Sentinel is one of those towns whose origin is an absolute mystery. These caves with blackened ceilings take us back to prehistoric times when our primitive ancestors may have used them as a natural shelter. The caves are natural and were used for living in and they are built under rocky vaults with fat up, uh, faches that close the mouths of the caves. The rocky vaults constitute the ceilings of most of these constructions. And you've got to admit, they're pretty incredible. Smells of freshly uh, done paint down here, love. <laughs> it's really pretty though. The whole, well, I say the whole village, but half the village is literally built into the rock. Stunning. And it's amazing to think how long they've been here for as well, and that they're all still standing. Yeah. That's bonkers. <laughs> they're all built into the rock, into the cave. Hang on, there's another one. So, Calais Jabonera, this is the street's name, okay? All right, so the name of this street is most likely due to the existence of some kind of soap market or factory so common during the 18th and 19th centuries, or maybe to the fact that it is a street where women used to go down to wash clothes. Le Dayen off the end of this street, somewhat farther from the town centre, there is another singular street, La Las Cabri... Las Cabra Isas, the goat houses. From both streets, there's a superb view of Lapina, the walled crag, with the remains of the medieval fortress and the Iglesia Maya, the Maya church. Like other streets you have been down, the houses in this one and in Cala Herreria are still inhabited. These caves with blackened ceilings also take us back to prehistoric times when they were used as a natural shelter. These caves are natural and were used for living in. They are built under the rocky vaults with for adis that close the mouths of the caves. The rocky vaulta constitute the ceiling of most of these constructions. It's wicked, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> that is cool. And you can literally see that they are using the roof as the cave yeah. on a couple of these houses. So I would say they were the older ones. Some of them stick out a little bit more, so that makes me think, oh, they probably have been added. They've had extensions. Where do you extend when you're <laughs> in a cliff? <laughs> the only way you can. 
Yeah, look at that one. That's incredible. So that looks like it would be the ancient monument or fortress up there then, love. Yeah. I will say as well, it is absolutely freezing. Yeah, we've gone from a balmy 18 degrees to 3 degrees. Yeah, it's cold. Because we're so high up. But also, the parking was a bit of a nightmare, wasn't it, love? Oh, yeah, we had to drive around before finding somewhere to park. It's, it is very like compact here yeah, and the, the streets are very narrow. Quite a few of these houses for sale, love. How do you feel about living in a cliff? No, I'll pass on that one, love. <laughs> yeah, I've got to admit, it's not for me either. <laughs> one earthquake and you're a goner. Yeah. <laughs> There's more across this bridge. They look a little bit more like huts. Can you handle the bridge now? Yeah, that's right. Oh, look, and there's more up ahead. They're everywhere, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. I thought it was just like one row of them, but it's not. Half the village is literally built into the cliffs. Yeah. I'd like to be able to see in one of them. I think you can. Oh, son, that's better. Oh, that's better, yeah. It's freezing. Okay. From the river to the centre, these are beautiful streets located under the Andalusian defensive wall, the true essence of the primitive centre. These streets point to the tr trollogic habitat of a town whose white facades and ochre stone are signs of identity. Centre de la Bojaz, where the sky is made of rock and silence, is a pickaxe's dream. You're right, Mills. It's boiling. How can you be boiling? It's three degrees. <laughs> Is that all the walking we're making you do first thing in the morning? No, it's funny. <laughs> these would have been originals, wouldn't they? Because these are like really run down. Yeah. They're used for animals now. There's chickens in this one. There's, yeah. pi there's pigeons chickens, in there. Pigeons. But they're eating those. Well, that's good. At least they're not completely gone to ruin. They're being no, used for yeah. something. But what I can notice on these ones is they don't—they're not actually that deep. Oh, okay. I, I think maybe where there's like a natural sort of concave in the bottom of the the cliffs. That's what they've built into. I don't think they've actually burrowed into the cliffs. Yeah. Not on these ones anyway. Well, they're new, but there, look, the ones in the middle. Yeah. So I use one of the old ones, and um, we can't see it, but hopefully you can. Dad packed me to camera. Go on then, Dexter camp. So we've actually found one we can walk in and actually have a good look at. I found the window. Yeah, we'll pick it up. It's oh gosh. Open back, I wouldn't Be careful, don't touch anything, because obviously it's quite run down. The roof is quite new. Yeah. Yeah. So what they do then, they're just sticking it into the, the cave then? Yeah, you can see they've mortared it in up there. And then they're just using the natural face to yeah, create the wall. Yeah. But I don't know. How would you live in that though? Because I mean, you've lost half your living room, haven't you, with a cave? You have, but I think, <laughs> you know, if all you have to build was that wall and that wall and then put a roof on it, you're only building a quarter of a house, didn't you? Yeah, but that would have been there to the garden then. But do you think this would give a new shelter from the wind and rain? You could set a little fire. Yeah. You know, and that's all that mattered back then. You didn't have all these posh commodities. It was just about, yeah, it'd be in dry and warm. Yeah. And that would that would provide that. It's better than just a hole in the wall, isn't it? Which yeah. is what they would have had. So. Okay, so this street is Calais Her Herrera, one of the most beautiful and romantic Andalusian streets. It's got a kiss me in this corner. It represents one of the most special streets in the urban landscape of Sentinel. La Haria, defined by some of the authors as one of the most beautiful Andalusian streets, is a street lined with cave houses, stepped and narrowed, that leads down to the river. Walking along this street between limestone facades and geraniums will take us to a surreal world halfway between min mineral chemistry and romantic literature. So you can get a tuk-tuk around the village for 45 minutes. 
if you call that number. I can't imagine it would be cheap though. So you can actually stay the night here. They've got Hotel Villa de Sentinel there. Two stars. So. Huh? Two star hotel. Two star hotel? I don't see anything. Right up our street, stars, though. Know. <laughs> That's the parking we tried to get into earlier. And why couldn't we get into it, love? Because <laughs> the road was like that. And there was a sign that said no camper vans or motorhomes. So we drove about two miles out of our way, didn't we, to get to it. And we've just managed to walk through the town and get to it in two seconds. Although this looks like paths, they're actually roads and the cars are obviously used to it because they're flying around here they don't care <laughs> also the sewerage is a little bit outdated some of the streets are a little bit whiffy but actually it's such a beautiful place and so unique restaurants and bars all in the caves it's definitely worth a visit found another restaurant yeah, yeah i'm stopped looking at food starving yeah, i'm love. hungry i'm starving yeah <laughs> so this is saying this is one of the oldest streets in the town it leads down to the river it's uh called Herrera because at some point it had a blacksmith's forge. It's one of the most noticeable streets in the urban scenery of Sentinel. And it does look absolutely beautiful. Oh, that street works your back muscle. <laughs> so we've been around, we've had a look at pretty much the whole village now and verdicts do. Was Very, it worth it? Yeah, it was definitely worth it. Never seen a town like this before. Yeah, it was brilliant. There you are, it's empty now. Do you want to go and get yourself a crack? Yeah. Did you want a coffee? Yes, please. These look delicious. Can we get one of these? Yeah. Oh. Homemade oh, made bread? Yeah, that looks beautiful. Yeah. That's the best sound in the world, that is other than a wine cork popping. <laughs> yeah, you got flour on your nose from the bread as well. You've been sniffing it, haven't you? Yeah. You bread sniffer. <laughs> Found a shop with some really cool trinkets in um, and some hoodies. Stu's quite taken with the cheese, the olive oil and the wine. 32 euros. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. I love gift shops. So all that food, Gifts, almonds. trinkets, everything. He's come out with, what is it? Almond cookies. Almond biscuits. Nice. Are they homemade? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're quite nice, actually. I'll give it a try. I love mm. a bit of almond. Yeah. It's a bit hard. <laughs> Tasty, though. That reminds me of a rusk biscuit a little bit. Yeah. Right, should we head back to the van now then? Yeah. Right, so we're going to head back to the van, going to check on Pebbles, and then we're going to head south now. We've the got another little village to go visit, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> really looking forward to this. In fact, today I've been looking forward to since the whole time we arrived in Spain and it hasn't let me down yet, so it's been brilliant. Oh, look at that. They've got a cute little shop with like candy floss and toys something. on. I want to buy something. <laughs> you always want to buy something. Come on. <laughs> If you can, come down to this place, it's absolutely wicked. It will not disappoint you. Although, be wary of the parking. We've had to park a little bit out of town and walk in because you can't get the camper vans or motorhomes through here safely. The roads are quite tight, but it was only a five minute walk. We've done well, I, I've really enjoyed it. Nice to see the vans in one piece. <laughs> I just saw a sign that said, uh, camper vans and motorhomes are for forbidden in the street. And I was like, oh, is this a street? Because we've got a parking sign there. So I did get a little bit nervous, but we're all good. Yeah, Let's get in then, kiddies. Everyone in. So that's Sentinel de la Bordegas, or <laughs> Flintstone Village, because it's easier. Done. <laughs> we're heading off now south. We've got to go through Ronda. And thankfully, we're not going to be doing any more dodgy roads. We're just heading straight down to a place that might make you feel a little bit blue. I don't wanna stay here, no. Ain't gonna keep it low now. If you wanna go, let's go. Let's wrap it up and hit the road. I just got an awesome vibe. Striking the wind of hopes now. Liberty's on my mind. We've taken off with <laughs> Thanks to you, getting a little bit cross to me because everywhere that I've suggested going, we've had to get there, but on the most dodgiest of roads. <laughs> We're currently on a bit of a cliff top and it's a single track road. Yeah, show them. <laughs> I'm picking the next few spots. 
sorry love. You've got to admit though, once we're actually there, it's fun, right? Yeah, getting there isn't fun. Well. <laughs> but, it's beautiful. Not so fun when you've got cars coming the other in the other direction though, so. We're 4.7 miles away. Your hair is actually going to fit in here, Dexter. <laughs> Up on the roof. <laughs> Checking the solar. He's obsessed. He only cleaned this van yesterday. No, it didn't. It was, wasn't it? No. Dad, can you take out my bubble, please? Oh, is he letting it all hang out? Yeah. You make the there you go, give it a shake. Oh, you might want that one. <laughs> Oh. Give it a shake. Open your door. <laughs> oh, there's another, oh, another dried for you to pick up. <laughs> sure, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Time for that to come out. I say so, yeah. So we've come to a little village called Juskar. So it's about 10 miles south of Rhoda. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what you're going to notice about this place, which is really, really cool, is that everything is blue. So we visited lots of white places. We came here because the whole village is blue. So it's affectionately known as the Smurf Village. And uh, I've been quite excited about this one. Oh, look at that house. That's pretty. Oh, they got a Smurf in the window. <laughs> <laughs> they put little smurfs up on their wall. Everywhere we go, there are hills this steep. I feel like I'm crawling up. <laughs> you guys are doing really well. I am smooth. Let's just think of doing. All right, okay, this some sort. Oh, that's a bunch, that's like a zip line there. Is it? Yeah. I think so. You want to catch? This is what I in here, look. It's a zip line across the city, town. Yeah. How old yeah, do you need? Yeah, it's a zip line. Dad, how, right. how old do you need? To be? You're tall enough. Like Wait, I'm tall enough. It's closed at the moment, but yeah, that's a zip line. Dad, I'm tall enough. But you can't <laughs> that's because you're seven now, babe. Come on. <laughs> yeah, if I was five, I would seven. Oh one? yeah, no chance. Yeah. I want a zip line. All the way over there. Yeah. It's closed anyway, but yeah, it is cool. Oh, we've got some paintings of Smurfs up there. Yeah. I think this is it, love. Yeah, I think so, love. So, Whee! you can come to Smurf Village. You've got a proper Smurf statue you can have a photo next to, if you really fancy it. But ultimately, it's just a village where all the houses are painted in blue. Yeah, and a zip line if you're really lucky for like five euros. But yeah, there's no chance we're doing that anyway. Thank God it's closed. I'll wait for you. Papa Smurf in all of his glory. Oh, yeah. Stop for a photo then. Yay. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit gutted with this one. I thought this was gonna be really, really good. Um, when I Googled it, it looked really, really appealing for young children and families to come and visit. And whilst there's a restaurant here and a hotel, there's maybe a cafe and a bar and a little park. There's not really much else. It's basically, all the houses are blue. They've got a Papa Smurf in the middle. But you know, for a free day out, if you're happy just to have a bit of a mooch around, you know then it's fine but yeah don't expect it to be all singing all dancing so i know it's what you make of it but this one for us is a no i gotta say though the parking was made really really easy it's free as well from what we can tell we've just come in we've parked up with complete ease it was no bother the last place we visited um, the flintstone village was a lot more difficult to find parking this was nice and easy and the drive down here was just phenomenal the views were insane so you know, it depends what you like, I guess. We're heading back to the van. We're gonna hit the road south.